Hello everyone, I hope you're all well. In today's video I'm going to be taking a look at this selection of paints that were very kindly sent to me from Poland by Renaissance. So This is a completely new brand to me, I've never tried them before, though I have seen a couple of reviews on YouTube which seem to be on the whole quite positive. And these are their intense watercolours which come in 15 milliliter tubes. Uh, they have a good range of colours available, um, 70 in total, 50 of them are single pigment. They are honey based paints though so I'd imagine they're quite runny so if you want them in a travel palette you might have problems. Uh, luckily though they do also offer a different range of watercolours that come in half pans. I did get sent some of these too and I'll be swatching them out in a future video. Okay, so the first colour I have is chromium yellow hue, which is made from PY74. And it's a nice clean yellow. It paints out very smoothly. Yeah, good start. And next we have Oriolin hue, and it's made from PY151. Yeah, I do like this pigment. I think this is probably the yellow I'd choose for my palette. And next is transparent yellow. And this is PY150. Yeah, it's a pretty good version of this pigment. I mean, it's not as strong as some brands I've tried. It doesn't go quite as dark. I mean, it might be a good thing as this pigment can be a bit overpowering sometimes. And next we have transparent gold ochre. And it's a mix of PY150 and PR101. So this looks like a deep queen gold color to me. Yeah, really nice paint. I quite like that the yellow isn't too overpowering in it. Next is Scarlet Red, and it's made from PR254. Yeah, pretty strong version of this pigment. Um, it looks a little bit cooler than I was expecting, though. And next we have Helio Cerulean. And it's made from PB153. Yeah, it's a very nice thalo blue green shade. Uh, it's strong, but it's not too acidic looking. Um, it's not quite as green leaning as some brands I've tried as well. Next is Indigo Hue. And this is a four pigment mix, and it's PB60, PV19, PB153, and PBK11. So that's quite a lot of pigments in there, but it does make for a very beautiful color. It might actually be one of the nicest indigo hues I think I've tried. And now on to cobalt turquoise, and this is made from PG50. I had to double check that I was using the right tube for this one. It's definitely not what I was expecting from a PG50. It looks more like a, a nice cerulean blue color rather than a turquoise. Yeah, quite an interesting paint though, I do like it. Now on to the second row with Prussian green. Made from PB60 and PG7. Quite unusual to see a Prussian green that doesn't contain Prussian blue. Yeah, it's quite nice though, it's a strong turquoise green. And next is Helio Turquoise, and it's a mix of PB153 and PG7. Yeah, pretty much what you would expect from a mix of these two thalos. Yeah, it's a decent turquoise. 
And now we have chromium oxide green made from PG17. Not a huge fan of the PG17 pigment these days, but yeah, this one seems like a good one. Um, it's not one of my best swatches. I think I used a bit too much water, but at least it will show some of the pigment's granulation. And next is olive green, made from a mix of PG7 and PO62. Yeah, it's a pretty good olive green, not too yellow leaning. Uh, next is golden green, which is a monster five pigment mix. It's PY3, PG7, PY150, PY151, and PBR6. Um, it is an interesting light green, I guess. Uh, I do wonder though if something similar could be achieved with fewer pigments. Next up is orange ochre, made from PY42. I was very surprised by this one. I'm pretty sure I've never seen a PY42 this orange. Yeah, it's a really, really beautiful paint. And next we have brown madder made from PBR25. Yeah, I do like this pigment. It's very similar to Holbein's Imidazolone Brown and Mugello's Red Brown, two paints that I really like. And then we have Burnt Umber, and it's just made from PBR7. Yeah, great burnt umber. It's kind of what you would expect. A nice chocolatey brown, I guess. And now onto the bottom row with Polish brown. Uh, this is the second PBR25 in the range. Now oh, it's very different to the brown matter, actually. I'm quite surprised. It's much more uh, neutralized and earthy. Yeah, very interesting color. I'm looking forward to see seeing how it dries. And next is sepia. This is made from PY150, PBR7, PBK11, and PBR25. It's actually a very nice sepia color, though I think other brands achieve similar with less pigments. And next is Perylene Violet Hue. It's made from PR101 and PB60. This is a bit of an odd one for me. Um, I did a Perylene Violet comparison a few months ago, and I remember them being very strong, deep like wine red colors. Um, and while this is an interesting color, it's much more grayed out and yeah, nothing like the real perylene violet color. And next is mineral gray, a mix of PW6, PG17 and PBK7. This seems like a good paint. Definitely feel like I can see the PG-17 coming through. And next we have Neutral Grey. It's a mix of PB-60, PO-62 and PR-254. Oh, wow, it doesn't contain black. Very unusual. Um, yeah, well done Renaissance for making this. I know I don't know why most other brands don't do it. Quite rare to find a, a neutral gray that doesn't contain a black, right? And finally we have lamp black and it's made from PBK7. It 
this is pretty much what you would expect so not a whole lot to say about this one okay that's all of them painted out and here they are in daylight when completely dry well, I must say I'm very impressed with these Renaissance tubes uh, they all painted out really nicely I particularly like the indigo hue um, it does actually look even better in real life than it does in the video uh, I also like the PG50 cobalt turquoise even though it looks more like a cerulean blue to me uh, as I said earlier in the video the range has 70 paints with 50 of them single pigment uh, 11 2 pigment mixes 4 3 pigment mixes 4 4 pigment mixes and 1 5 pigment mix yeah, I definitely recommend trying out this brand if you can get hold of some. They're exceptionally good value in my opinion, especially if you're in Europe. Uh, have any of you tried Renaissance Intense Watercolors before? I'd be very interested to hear what you thought of them. Thank you very much for watching and I'll speak to you in the next video. Bye bye.